Hey guys, what's going on? It's Steve Cronin and I recently turned 30. I actually turned 30 years old last month and this video I want to do something a little different. I want to talk about the seven life lessons I have learned in my 30 years being on this planet. That's coming up. Alright guys, welcome. If it is your first time watching a video on this channel, I want to let you know that this channel is all about how to increase your focus and productivity so you can be more successful in your professional life. Uh, today we're doing something a little different though. Today I'm going over the seven things I've learned, which I guess could be considered life lessons or life lessons to me. Seven huge things I have learned uh, turning 30. And these are things that certainly can affect focus, productivity, and being successful. All right, so let's make a deal. Kind of like a little poll. If you find one of these seven lessons useful, then give this video a thumbs up. But if you find none of them useful, or only like one or two of them useful, and you're like, this whole video was not that great, then give me a thumbs down. Okay, let's go. All right, number one. Your talents will not be discovered, be discovered, until you discover yourself. And here's what I mean by that. So I put like be discovered in quotes, right? So when I was younger, right? When I was much, much younger, as, as early as I can remember, like most kids probably in elementary school, you know, I think I wanted to be like an actor or something. And uh, you know, my mindset at the time and, and, and growing up after that as well, I was like, oh, well, you know, one day someone else out there is going to discover me and my talents and then just give me a job. Very, very childish thinking, obviously, but that way of thinking persisted with me in different ways, uh, even throughout college, right? So in college, I really wanted to be like a, a political commentator, right? And I was really into like political stuff when I was in school. This is when I was like 20, 21 years old. And I wanted to like write articles for like magazines. I wanted to like, you know, do commentary. Now I didn't have a process for this. I didn't know what I was doing. What I did was just apply, like write an application and apply to like a bunch of different websites and heard nothing back. I also should mention that while I was an English or poetry major at the time, um, I didn't have any experience in that, so that's probably why. But here's the thing, and here's what I mean by, by you know, you need to discover it yourself. I had my whole belief, my whole imagination, probably had something to do with watching television my whole life. My whole idea of how someone became successful was completely skewed. I, for whatever reason, thought that some, I had to go to someone else and someone else had to give me something in order for me to be successful, which is in my experience now completely untrue. And if that does happen for some people, it, it happens to a very small amount of people. In retrospect, what I should have done is when I was 20 years old, I should have started a blog, which I could have done. I was you know, technically savvy enough to start a weblog. I should have started a blog and started to just write and do commentary. Yeah, I wouldn't have been paid for it, but it was something I wanted to do and it was something I could have done every day. I could have done a little research into, you know, search engine optimization, some basic marketing strategies so I wouldn't just be writing on a blog that no one would see. And then slowly I could have, you know, grown an audience and, and people can, could give me feedback. Like, yes, like, we like what you're doing, do more. No, we don't like what you're doing, don't do more. Do more. And by discovering myself, you just, I'm just realizing now, there's this author, James Altiger, who has a book called Choose Yourself. I haven't read it, but I feel like the premise, like I, I keep hearing that in my head when I'm saying this, the premise might be the same. But um, essentially, no one is gonna give you what you want, and you have to create for yourself what you want, and you need to start doing it as soon as you can, as soon as you know what you wanna do. For me also, age was kind of a barrier, right? I was like 20 years old, I'm like who's gonna listen to a 20 year old? And now that I'm 30, I'm like, hmm, man, like, I kind of wish people, or I kind of wish I would have started this when I was younger because uh, people def definitely would have listened to like a 20 year old talking. I just, I just started recording this video. I don't even know what I want to talk about, but. If you want to be a musician, start making music videos on YouTube. If you want to be a writer, start writing and circulate your work 
around the world for everyone to see, which you can do very easily with the internet. This brings us to lesson number two, which is life begins when you want it to. If I wanted it to, my life, right, that chapter of my life of being like a political commentator could have begun when I was 20. But instead, I created this mental blockade for myself and I decided to wait until someone else gave me something and then I gave up on that altogether and I never did it. And I probably never will. And in my head I was thinking, oh, I have to be 30 and I'll start, I'll start this then. But in reality, whatever you want to do in your life, whatever chapter of your life, it's all a mental construction. You know, someone going into the next chapter of their life. It happens whenever you decide that it's going to happen. And you don't have to wait. All right, number three. The definition of success, what success means to you, is always changing even when you may not know that it is changing. So let's take this example again when I was in college. 10 years ago, I'm living in a dorm at the University of Houston and I have no money, I don't have a job, I'm going to school full time and I can't afford anything. And I was like, man, like if I just had, you know, X amount of money per month and access to A, B and C and was doing, you know, D for a living, then I would be successful, right? But then now fast forward to today, I have all of those things I wanted when I was 20 and more, and, but in my head, I still have this narrative being like, okay, you know what? If only I had A, B, and C, X, Y, and Z, then I would be successful, right? So it's kind of like once you attain what you want, if you're not kind of being cognizant and aware of what success is and what it means to you and like maybe writing it down, uh, then it can kind of just keep growing out of your reach and you might never get it and you might actually already have what you wanted and not have even realized that you got there. Your perspective, I guess it's like a natural tendency for me at least, I'm not saying for everyone, to once you attain what you want, it's kind of like unconsciously, you, you don't even realize you got it and you just kind of want more. All right, number four, traumatic events in the past cannot be ignored. Now this doesn't apply to everyone, but for me, yeah, I had a lot of childhood trauma and what did I do? I pretended that it didn't exist. Uh, turns out that it does and it turns out that it affects me even today, right? There are thoughts and feelings and emotions that I have every day that I am not aware of. And some basic psychology principle here, if you have stuff going on with you that you're not aware of, you know, it's in your subconscious, it's going to affect you in various ways, whether it be anxiety or something like that. So all I really mean by this is make sure you don't ignore parts of yourself, don't ignore parts of your past, address them in any way you can, whether it be through something like psychotherapy, uh, even a practice like journaling, which anyone can do. Journaling, daily journaling for, even only if you only do it for a few weeks, is psychedelic, okay? The definition of psychedelic being uh, taking parts of yourself that you're unaware of and then becoming aware of them. I mean, journaling will take you through that process. All right, uh, lesson number five, uh, Jimmy Eat World still has written one of my favorite songs. The Middle, right? Okay, so there's a line in, or a lyric in the song The Middle by Jimmy Eat World called, just be yourself, it doesn't matter if it's good enough for someone else, right? So like, as a, I liked this song when I was a teenager when it came out, it came out when I was like maybe 16 or something. And you know, it, when you're a kid, at least when I was a kid, uh, teachers, professors are always like, you know, be yourself, be yourself, be yourself, right? Uh, and which, which is important, right? I mean, like it, the moment you try to uh, start forming an identity based off of another person or, a, you know, an other, then you're really just kind of like creating a mask that is a false version of you that, that doesn't mean anything and is going to cause you a lot of problems. So on that basis, like it's really important. Um, I guess it's, you know, related to me as a kid, the song, because, you know, being yourself when you're 
a teenager is difficult, right? Uh, you're, you're still, you're learning about what that process is like and it can be like emotional at times. It can be hard, especially when you're getting uh, feedback or even like negative feedback or criticism from like your peers, right? But the reason why I still like this song is because you know, looking at this from being 30, there's actually a lot of power in being who you are. Um, it's one thing to, you know, it's one thing to get a message from the song and be like, oh, I don't care what anyone thinks about me. Um, I'm not going to let the haters get me down. What is this Taylor Swift says? The haters are going to hate or something, right? Um, but, but the flip side to that is like, no, like you, being who you are, will ensure that you will be the most successful, powerful person that you can be. The most awesome version of self, yourself that you can be. And why would you want anything else? Why would you want anything else? All right, number six is psychological growth is no longer automatic. Growing up is, I was going to say growing up is easy. It's not easy. Uh, growing up is hard. The process of growing up is easy in the sense that it's going to happen whether you like it or not. Like, actually growing up like you mentally and psychologically go through developmental stages pretty much at the whim of your own mind and its own predetermined impulses and protocols right like there is a system and a path inside of you that pretty much drives you in different directions uh, from age zero to at some point in your 20s. Um, but then something weird happens. Then you can kind of just like stop developing. You can like, you'll, you'll physically continue to age, but mentally you'll just kind of stop, you'll stop developing. You'll stop, you know, and I'm, you won't go anywhere. And I don't mean just like learning new information, like, oh, we're not in college anymore and we're not learning, maybe, maybe I'm, Maybe someone's not a big reader and they're not like learning new stuff, but I mean actually having like the perspective that you have on the world now is probably different than the perspective you had 10 years prior. The perspective that someone had when they were 17 is different than the perspective they had on themselves in the world when they were seven. But uh, now, you know, going through that psychological development actually takes effort. And there are th there are processes and stuff on how to do that. Um, a lot of, there's a lot of research in adult development and, and how to, uh, how to continue developing as an adult. And a lot of it does have to do with learning new information. Um, but also a lot of it has to do with examining the self and examining your belief system and, 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 and seeing what parts are serving you and what parts are hurting you. And, 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 and a lot of that, that growth involves a lot of amount or a, a quite a bit amount of suffering, right? So it's a process that is participatory and it's a process that requires effort. And uh, if you want to continue to grow as an adult and become a more how powerful human being, um, it's a choice. All right, and number seven, trying to make the present look like the past is probably a waste of time. This is something that I actually just kind of realized within the past year where I, you know, probably because I, you know, knew that the, my 30th birthday was coming, I was looking at my life now and being like, man, you know, a few years ago, like, that was where my life was at its peak. And what can I do to try to, like, get back there? How can I set up my environment and my life to get back? Th and, 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 that, and that way of thinking is just nonsense because, because that means that I'm not, you know, enjoying what I have now. People say, like, call it being present or being mindful or whatever, um, because, because what might happen or what I suspect will happen is that if I, if I don't kind of like enjoy myself now, then in a, in a few years, I won't have anything to, to look back to and be like, oh, when I was 30, I was doing all these awesome things, right? It'll, you know, a few years from now, maybe I'll be like, oh, it's still, you know, I'm still waiting for my life to get back to it. So, so I, I have learned for me, that making the present try to look, look like the past, not worth your time. All right, guys, that's it for now. Uh, thanks for, for keeping up with this video. Um, uh, if you got anything from these 
life lessons or learn anything, let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, if you have any of your own that you want to contribute, and no, you don't have to be 30 or over to do so, let me know in the comments below. Um, but I hope you all enjoyed this video a little different than usual, but definitely all things that uh, pertain to the subject matters that I talk about here on YouTube. So that's it for now. Take care, and I'll see y'all next time. Subscribe to my channel if you want more videos. Bye.